welcome to Breath of Life Art Studio, where today we have a very special spooky Halloween edition, where we are going to be making hot glue bugs. Bugs made of hot glue. What What is that, you ask? Well, so you remember that toy back in the day where you would pour gunk into molds and then you had like these little rubbery bugs? It's like that, but way better because you get to design your own bugs. You could make them as big or small, as complicated as you want. And when you stick wires in, you can make them poseable, which is extra super cool. So anyway, it's basically a four step process. Number one, you sculpt your bug. Number two, you mold your bug. Number three, you put your, uh, your wires and your hot glue in the mold. You pop it out and if you're so inclined, you can paint them. So I'm gonna show you two different types of material to sculpt with. I'm gonna show you two different types of material to mold with, and I'm gonna show you two different kinds of hot glue. You have your standard, uh, standard edition, vanilla, regular, plain old hot glue, but you also have this Primo. This, this is the stuff right here. Look at this, black, black hot, it just, just feels powerful you know what I mean like you could just it's just oh it's so good like oh great for bugs great for bugs okay so without further ado uh, let's start making some bugs we start out with sculpting so let's check out this material right here so the first kind of clay that I'm gonna show you how to use is not really clay, it's called steel stick. And it's basically a two-part epoxy. Uh, it's for plumbing and stuff. You can get it at hardware stores. And uh, you mix it together. I like to wear gloves. And uh, it's good to use parchment paper. Now, once you mix it, uh, you can just turn, make little balls out of it and then form those into a bug. I'm gonna make a centipede. So I'm just gonna make a bunch of balls. All right, now I actually printed out some reference. I think it's always great to use reference, even if you're doing cartoony stuff or stylized things. I, I like the way this guy is shaped, and so I'm gonna try to emulate that basic form. And I've got some water that I use on this tool. You could use popsicle sticks, really anything. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is, is pinch the shape so that it's not just a, like a string of pearls. I want it to have some different kind of form to it. I'm going to use some beads to make eyes. Just pop that in there. All right, now I'm adding some detail between the segments so it's got some more interest to it. Now the nice thing about this using steel stick is that you can always add more to it. Now I'm going to make a spider abdomen. I kind of want it to have a skull-like look to it. Got some eye sockets there. I think I'm going to give it a little bit of a, like a nose socket. All right, now this part, uh, the centipede's set up and I can start adding some more details to it. So I'm adding some more ridges around the segments. And a little water on my finger, I could just blend that right into the other stuff. Try to mix small batches of this so that I'm not under time pressure to get it uh, done before it sets. I love these little rubber, rubbery, nubbery tools. They're uh, called uh, paint color shapers and uh, come in really handy for blending. All right, so this is the uh, amazing mold putty. You just mix half and half. And now I'm going to squeeze the spider right into it. I'm 
puckering up the edges all around here so that it um, overlaps a little bit. I want some undercuts in there actually because I'm going to be putting the legs through there. And it's nice and flexible so you don't have to worry about your um, plug getting stuck in there. Because the, the rubber is flexible and the hot glue is flexible so it's pretty easy to get this stuff out. Alright, same basic idea for the centipede. Again, making sure that I'm pushing the stuff over the over the bottom edge there a little bit. Alright, that should do the trick. Let's see how the spider turned out. Alright, now I've just got some cheap old wire and I'm gonna cut out some legs. Try to straighten it as much as I can. Basically I'm gonna put it right through the middle so each wire is gonna be two different legs. Just make sure I've got about the same size. I measure it against the old one. Now I'm going to use this X-Acto knife to cut areas for the leg wires to go. I'm just going to slice right through it. And same thing for the centipede. the wires in all these little creases, these little slices. I could actually slice them a little deeper, it's really not a problem. The deeper these slices, the further up into the body the leg's going to be. in a little bit thicker wire for the spider legs. That's where the glue will go and hold it into place there. I think these aren't quite long enough. I'm gonna, I'm gonna double the length here. It's always better to make the legs longer than you think you need them and then cut them down as needed. Bend them up and around to make sure they stay in place. Alright, now I'm just going to squeeze my hot glue in and around the wires. I'm not too worried if it if it oozes out the side a little bit. I could just trim it down. Okay, with the spider, I'm gonna stick my nozzle way up in there to make sure that it gets in all the little cracks and crevices. I'm not worried that it's sloppy down there. I'll just be clipping that away anyway. Okay, now I'm using canned air to cool it off. If you hold it upside down and spray it, it'll cool off super fast. Just be careful not to get your skin.
<laughs> it looks so cool. Alright, I'm just gonna slowly peel this away. And out it comes. And I'm gonna trim away the excess to get that shape right. Alright, now to get the the legs coated, I stick them through foil, put a bead on there, and then pull them out of the hole. And that smooths it all the way down. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to sculpt with polymer clay. Can't get much simpler than a snake. And then I'm just going to roll some ridges in it. Basically just blocking out the, the forms. Now I put it on some tape here, which is completely unnecessary. Uh, it was just laying there and I thought, well, it's kind of curvy, it might help. I don't think it really helped. Okay, I'm using this tool to get some interesting uh, shape to the shells there. Now I'm making the eyes. Alright, for the spider, I want to make it look kind of like this spider from this Demon Hunter poster. Because it's going to be on a Demon Hunter sculpture when it's done. It's just a matter of squashing some balls together and smoothing them out. I'm using a long blade here to slice and shape the legs the way I want them. All right, I think that'll do pretty well for the basic shape. Now I just bake them in the oven for about half an hour at 230 degrees. All right, I'm taking them off the foil just because it's hard for the camera to see with the bright foil there. I'm using epoxy sculpt here to add the details. This is a two-part epoxy, kind of like the steel stick, but it's made specifically for sculpting. And I'm attaching it in the areas where I feel like it's weak and it can break. It's kind of filling in those areas. I'm also going to accentuate the joints on the legs. And basically put in the little shape on his abdomen that I, I'll be able to paint later. All right, this is the other material I'm using. It's called Poyo Putty, and it's a little um, more professional than the um, Amazing Mold Putty. 
You use 20% uh, of one side to 100% uh, of the other side, and it um, doesn't have to be exact, but the closer you are, the better. Okay, we give that about 20 minutes to set. In the meantime, I'm gonna do some stuff about these knees. See how they just kind of bend like noodles? What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kiss those bends with a drop and then pull it out and just kind of let it hang. Don't worry about that string. We'll take care of that later. Let's kiss it and let it drip. Yeah, that's nice. Now we just snip off the extra string. And sometimes you can get these rough patches on your wires. You just heat it up with a little flame and then smooth it down. Now here's how I'm going to make an antenna with graduated thickness. Start by just dipping it right into the nozzle. Let it cool for a minute. If you wet your fingers, you can pull the glue down while it's still pretty hot and it won't burn you. Now I'm not worried about how rough this is because I'm just going to keep sticking it in that nozzle but I wanted it to taper a little bit. Okay, now the next part is a little bit thicker. Let that cool for a second. And then again. There, so now you've got that thing that a lot of bug antennas have where it's got a couple segments to it. I just use some tweezers to jab it into the head. All right, let's see how this fancier centipede did. Some of the legs broke off, it's fine. I don't care about the master. Just get rid of that. This first one, I'm just gonna run the glue in and see how the shape works. I'm not worried about wires for this one. I'm making sure to press my nozzle up against the surface so it completely fills the gaps. And pull it out. Um, uh, oh, okay, not quite done yet. Put that back. Let's check out the spider. Well, that just popped right out. Okay, I'm gonna use scissors to cut uh, at the tips of all the legs so that the wires can stick out there. I'm just pushing the glue through with the edge there and then sticking the wire in. All right, let's see if this guy's cooled off enough now. All right, oop, oop, okay, losing some legs, but that's not a big deal. I'll just, I'll just tear him out and uh, add more glue. This is a project that is really hard to screw up. One of the things I like about it.
Now those legs are good as new. Okay, now for this one, I'm gonna cut more wire grooves. Centipedes have a lot of legs. Have you guys noticed that? What's the deal with that? Why do they have so many legs? Who needs that many legs? What gives them the right? This, these grooves are just not cutting it. I think I need to add more polio to it. So let me do that real quick. Basically, I just need a wall to anchor the, the wires in place. Alright, let's get back to the spider while we're waiting for the Poyo to set up. Trim them down. Alright, I've got these wire bender things that uh, help give it a nice crisp bend in the legs. Okay, I'm gonna measure the legs to make sure they're all the same length. Two inches seems good. All right, now I'm gonna hot glue the tips. Yeah, seems pretty good. I would not want that to crawl into my mouth while I'm sleeping. But it probably does. All right, now I wanna see how far I can push the hairiness of this guy. So I'm doing very gentle little kisses. Kiss and pull, kiss and pull. Yeah, that was, that was a big wet sloppy one. Sorry guys. Let's be a little more subtle here. There we go. I know they have thinner nozzles for hot glue guns. I need to look into that. That would make this a lot easier. All right, and then I'm just gonna trim away the excess. All right, how's that look? Pretty creepy. Looks creepy to me. I'm creeped out. All right, now let's do some uh, regular hot glue and see how that looks. I'm actually gonna start this one by filling in the head and abdomen. Mm, I think I'm gonna jab the bubbles out. I'm just gonna use this wire here and try to make sure there's no bubbles clinging to the inside. Fill in the trench and stick the leg in.
right, well that's kind of interesting looking. Let's trim it up. Now imagine if I had some coppery colored wire, that might have worked a little better than the silver. Pulling the strand out to get a, a better taper on the end of the foot here. Okay, I'm going to use this Citadel shade called Seraphim Sepia. It's super easy to use. You just slather it on and it seeps into all the little cra uh, cracks and stuff. All right, for the legs on this run of the centipede, this wall definitely helped. Okay, I'm gonna give this guy a spine now so that I can bend him in any direction I want. All right, back to this uh, wireless one. I'm gonna try to make his legs arc a little bit with just by heating him up with the flame. Uh, I gotta be pretty careful with that. But it, it gave it some more interest. Okay, back to this guy. Um, okay, back to the regular hot glue guy. Just doing the same tricks. Just Jamming all the legs in there. I like the way centipedes legs move when they walk. They go in like ripples or waves. It's pretty cool. Right, throw some seraphim shade on there. Okay, I'm gonna use some flexi dip on this spider. It's a spray that's supposed to be flexible afterwards, so it shouldn't uh, crack if you move it. And for this one, I'm gonna use some gloss red. I'm just lightly misting it. This one I want to try something where I, I want the limbs to be red and then the body to be transparent. Okay, these ones I'm just giving a clear coat to make them shiny and gross. All right, let's try some crazy colors. Here's some fluorescent yellow. I think I'll accentuate the eyes and the skull shape on them. And now I'm just looking at the different kind of patterns that they have. Some, some of them have neat, some of them have neat patterns around the edges of their shells. Some of them have like neat racing stripes. So I'm just going to try a couple different things. Okay, I'm using some red enamel paint on this one to um, paint the, the Demon Hunter logo on his back. Okay, so as a bonus, I'm going to show you this other totally random thing. You could use parchment paper, uh, pin it up against the wall. Okay, now I got my canned air, I've got my hot glue gun. And I'm just going to ooze the glue out slowly while spraying with the air. And look what I got here. Just this mat of crazy webbing. It just, it's, it's quite a bit different than that uh, cottony stuff you get at the Halloween store. And so yeah, here's, here's the bugs. This is how they turned out. Um, 
I feel like there's a lot of room to explore and come up with interesting, creative types of bugs or, or anything else like that. And there you have it, some, whoa, cool bugs. Ah, ah. So there you have it, creepy crawly bugs made out of hot glue. Now, I feel like um, as I was developing this technique, I'm really just scratching the surface. There's probably a lot of places you can take this, uh, a lot of neat applications. So, man, if you guys think of cool stuff, take pictures of it and send it to me. You can always hit me up on social media. My links are below or leave a comment. Um, speaking of comments, I had this idea. I didn't have this idea. I saw another guy do this and I thought, I'm gonna take that idea. I'm gonna take it and it's gonna be mine now. And my idea is to read some comments because, hey, I really value them. And and so it's like a shout out to you guys. Um, so I figured each episode, I will I will do a positive comment and a negative comment because I, I like both of them. So to start out, uh, John P. Epler for the Sculpey 101 series said, Josh, this series is the best instructional video I have ever seen on any subject. By the way, your work is amazing. Well, that is super kind. Thank you, John. Uh, amazing? Yay. It's all right. It's all right. I like it. Or, or I want to keep doing it. All right. And um, G Echo Chamber 5 commented on my photography video where I showed how to, well, I had someone else show how to photograph your sculpture as well. Um, I, I had a chart that I was trying to, I was trying to explain, here, let me see if right. Yeah, so I was trying to explain how to, uh, how things get harder. The further you push into them, how much time and money it takes. Anyway, they said, uh, I see you have not hit that sweet spot in math yet. Mirror the curve on the Y, X axis and it's fine. Currently you are suggesting you have to invest a lot of time and then you hit a spot where you suddenly get pro by spending just a few moments. Right. Exactly the opposite of what I was trying to say. Anyway, uh, they said also, thank you for the, the video is great. Just thought I should tell you about that graph for the future. I hope I didn't hurt anyone. And uh, the reason I wanted to read this is because I want you guys to know you cannot hurt me. I'm, I'm invincible, pretty much. Pretty, look. Honestly, I really like this kind of feedback. I'm bad at math. There are lots of things I'm bad at. I'm even bad at a lot of art things. If you see me doing something and you know of a better way to do it or that I'm doing it wrong, oh, please leave a comment because I'm all about like growing and developing as an artist and helping everyone else grow and develop as an artist too. I have no ego about this, okay, honestly. So yeah, thanks a lot for that feedback. Oh, one last thing I wanted to mention I got my website up. I'm really excited about it. It's very simple. It's breathoflifeart.com. Very simple. And I have so many things going on. Go check it out, please. I have comments on the bottom of everything. I would love you to comment on anything that you like or don't like or would like to see or anything else. Super cool. Um, yeah, and uh, is, that, is that all I've got? I think that's all I've got. So I'm just going to uh, wish you guys a happy Halloween and uh, since there's Christmas stuff up here, yeah, Merry Christmas as well. Merry Christmas! <laughs>